So in today's video, I want to talk about defense in depth and how it relates to cybersecurity. Originally, though, this was a military strategy used to put in multiple mechanisms of defense to slow down the advances of an attacker. So maybe if we think about this from a castle situation, we didn't just put in one layer of defense here. There wasn't just one big outer wall, and if you smashed your way through that, you had access to the whole castle. That would have been a bit of a disaster. So instead, they put in multiple layers of defense to make it difficult to attack that castle. So you had the castle built up on a hill, for example, and then it had a moat around it, which is filled with water to make it hard to breach. What we then had was these large stone outer walls. And these stone outer walls had big guard towers where you could fire down with bow and arrows and crossbows, for example. But if you somehow manage to break down and scale that outer wall, then you're going to be hit with a bunch of soldiers from the defensive castle, which you could potentially again make your way through. But then guess what? There's another big inner wall built from stone. So as you can see here, we're not going to do a full castle history lesson, but there's a lot of different layers that you've got to break through to get access to that castle. So the same thing applies when we start thinking about security. You need to put in multiple layers of protection to stop attackers getting unauthorized access to your data. So let's have a look at some examples of what these layers of protection might be when it relates to cybersecurity. The first security layer on our list is physical security. So the goal here is to put physical security safeguards in place for people to be able to access our assets. So this could be, for example, when you have your physical building that hosts your data center, how do we put key cards or biometrics to stop unauthorized access? Next up is identity and access security controls. How do we use things like multi-factor authentication and conditional access to control access to our infrastructure, to be able to make changes, or to our company data? So it's important that we can control the access and then audit all these different access points along the way. This then brings us into the perimeter. And it's so important to have your network perimeter protected from these network-based attacks hitting your resources. So this could be using things like distributed denial of service protection to filter out any of these large attacks that are trying to take down your service or your business application that's running your day-to-day -day organization. Our next layer then is network security. And how do we start controlling connectivity across all of our environment. So this can be things like using network segmentation, network access controls. And at the end of this is how do we limit communication between our resources? Here, we're really trying to lower our risk of lateral movement within the environment. This then brings us nicely into our compute layer where we start looking at things like giving secure access to virtual machines and making sure that these virtual machines are up to date, they're all patched, no malware on them. And then also that they have the correct controls to minimize security risks, which then brings us into our application layer. So here we're making sure that you know, our applications don't have any vulnerabilities and we're bringing security really in from the beginning of starting to build applications. So security should be part of your software development lifecycle. And then finally, we have data. So here, how do you protect and manage all of your business and your customers' data? This could be things like encryption. How do we encrypt when data is in rest or in transit and so on and so forth. So here are some high level ideas of some examples of these different layers that we can use within security to protect our environments and slow down the advance of attackers. The next security model that Microsoft didn't make up that you might want to think about is the CIA triad, which stands for confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So let's just spend a bit of time just double clicking into them. So our first principle is going to be confidentiality. And this is important to make sure that your company has the right level of secrecy across your data. So you might want to be protecting things like financial data, personal data, or your company's IP. And you don't want unauthorized access to this data. So you're going to want to make sure that it's protected in all sorts of ways, whether it's at rest, at transit, or its final destination. There's multiple ways you can start thinking about putting security around this confidentiality, from making sure that you do have that encryption in place, 
to classifying your data. You're classifying whether it's highly confidential and what does that mean to that file? What's the protection around it? Through to maybe it's a publicly facing file and you have less confidentiality around that information. Through to then making sure that your users are correctly trained on what to think about when it comes to data confidentiality, but also then your data protection policies and procedures within your organization. Because attackers are going to try and break your encryption and use social engineering to get access. So you're going to want to have to think about how does your security systems and your data secrecy play in when we think about confidentiality. Our next principle then is integrity. And here it's important that we have the confidence that our data hasn't been tampered with or altered in any way. So for example, if we put data into a database that's encrypted, if we were to then go ahead and decrypt that data, it's going to be the same as it was when the data went in and was originally encrypted. So that's the confidence that we're looking for when we start thinking about the integrity of our data. So our last principle then is availability. And this is pretty much what you would expect is how do we ensure that our information and our data and our systems are available to the authorized users that need to access them. So there's plenty of things that can go into this. We mentioned a few earlier. So if somebody tried to do a denial of service attack, how do we ensure that we have distributed denial of service protection to stop these attacks taking down our services? But then it can also be a multitude of things of just ensuring that our resources, like our virtual machines, are patched and protected from malware and vulnerabilities. So you're going to have to think about the software side of this, but also the physical side of what does it take to keep your environment available? And then things like disaster recovery in case anything happens to your environment in its production state. So those are the three things that we have to think about. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So hopefully you've enjoyed this as we walk through what it looks like to start thinking about defense in depth, and then looking at tying things like defense in depth in to the CIA triad. So make sure if you've enjoyed this that you subscribe, and we'll see you next week for another video.